friends. So here we are. We are on step 1.4 of the Moves and Turns lesson, and this time it's called Your Turn. And what it's asking you to do is to take this sample code that we were just tinkering around with in the previous uh, step on 1.3 to go ahead and use these programming stacks to create a program that moves the driving base in three different ways. So you need to come up with three ways in which you want to move your driving base. There are lots of different options to do this. And the question here is why is it important to plan each step of your program? I know you as an educator understand how important it is to plan and design and think through it besides just going in and plugging and chugging. Don't forget there's lots of these little hints along the way. So if you click this hint, it's going to show you here uh, the idea of pseudocode. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. The idea of pseudocode is where you're not writing complete coding, just like what are the, each of the initial steps that you need to do. Um, and so I've done that here in my notebook. I have a notebook dedicated to this, this lesson as I sketch ideas out. And you can see I've done this. And this is my own version, not that it's perfect pseudocode. But I've decided that I'm going to come up with three ways. I'm going to do a spin turn, a pivot turn, and a smooth turn. Now, if you want to try to figure these out on your own, go for it. I encourage you to try to solve these challenges completely on your own before watching any further. Uh, but if you need help and you're just completely stuck, then obviously keep on watching. So what I mean by this, when I'm talking about a spin turn, what this is, this is a really important for First Lego League as well. Because the First Lego League mat, you know, it's four by eight and there's lots of tight spaces. What we want on spin turn is we want one wheel going backwards, one wheel going forward. This allows us to make really precise turns in a very small, tight space. Um, so that's what this is. And I'm, and I'm just my pseudocode here. I know it's hard to probably see is I want one motor going negative 50% or power and the other one going positive. And then I've got what here is called a pivot turn. So what I'm looking for here is one of these motors is not going to move. The wheel is going to stay stationary. It's going to be the pivot, like in basketball, your pivot foot. And this other wheel is going to spin, and it's going to spin around that pivot. So as we put it down and it gets rocking and rolling, it's going to pivot on that wheel as we design. And the third one is the smooth turn. It's probably maybe the most accurate, but it requires lots of space. And what we're doing there is we've got one wheel going slow and the other one going fast. So it's, it, you need a bigger space for it to turn, um, but it allows you to do that. Obviously, the, the more diverse the, the numbers, the tighter the turn is going to be. Um, but those are the three turns that I'm going to attempt to do. So what I want you to do here, if you haven't already come up with it, if you want to try to figure out those three types of turns, great. If you want to come up with your own, obviously go for it. Um, you can hit pause right now and kind of brainstorm on your own because the next step I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about coding this as we get going. Okay, so I've switched my screen here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, and what we've got going on here, this is what they want us to do. Now, I went and just opened up another moves and turn lesson. I renamed it for me three turns. So this allows me to keep this code the way I want it. And what I did here, I can see my comments got a little goofy here. I got a spin turn. I've got smooth turn. And I've got pivot turn, just like I showed you in the notebook. So one of the things that I needed to do is I just cleared out. I'll just back this out and start all over here. I cleared out all the code. And I think when we started, we had two of these these blocks here, all right? And so how I did this, once I had this in place, I went down at the bottom left, there's this drop-down block called All Code Blocks. And this will give you all the blocks that are available in the coding. Right now they limit it to you for your learning so you're not overwhelmed. And so you've got blocks that work with single motors, your movement, many others that we'll get to here in some future lessons. But I went to movement, and just one of the things that I like to put into place here, I like to use this. It's not needed for right now for this robot. We've only got two motors. 
But later on, if you get four motors, three motors going, you need to identify the motors. So I think it's just a good habit for me. It's an extra block that isn't needed, but it's important for me to remember all the details. And I put them to set motors, and I put them to B and C. And the reason I chose B and C is because that's what we plugged our motor cables into, B and C. So if I had them in A and D, I would just change that to A and D. And you do that by just using the little drop-down menu. Now, for the pivot turn, if you remember, that's where one motor doesn't move and the other one is going to spin. And so what we want to do is you, if you kind of scroll through here, I'm looking for this block here, move for one rotation. And then you can see I've got now two numbers right here. I have a 50 and 50% 50 speed. This correlates with B and this correlates with C. So I can go in here and make this zero for our pivot turn, and that should give us some success here. I'm going to do three rotations so we can see that. Now here's what's really cool. I'm going to go ahead and let's just get rid of this all together. I know that I want to use this for my smooth turn because it's a similar concept. So I can right-click. If I right-click on this yellow, it will duplicate all the box, code blocks from wherever I click and everything down below it. So if I do that, you see I get a copy. If I say I only wanted like this bottom one, I could right click here and duplicate that and I would get just that one block. So that's a really important feature, just to right click, all right? I got my comment box over here and I know that I want this to be a labeled as a smooth turn. And now I just need to change this as opposed to left button, let's make it a right button pressed. Everything else is the same, but I now wanna make this a 20 and 80%. So this is going to be a smooth turn. One motor slow, other one's fast. All right, so now I've got those two. The last one I need to do is my, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got spin turn. So I'm gonna go ahead, actually this will work exactly for spin turn as well. So we'll go here, we'll duplicate that again. I'm just gonna change this here to spin turn. We'll call this, we'll make this the down button. And what we'll do here is I'll make one a negative 50%. That's going to make the motor go backwards. And then 50, the other motor will go forward. And now we've got these three options using basically the framework from 1.3. I've got my, my brick plugged in here to the thing. So I could run this while it's plugged in and test it so I don't have to keep unplugging it. So if you wanted to try that, all right, what I suggest is make sure you got enough loose cable here so it doesn't snag and impact it. But I could go here and actually just hit play, which is in the bottom right hand corner. You can't see that right now. But I can run the code while it's plugged in. Therefore, I don't have to unplug it and then try to find the code and do that. So if I tried that way, just so you can see, I'll do this both ways. And I do, let's do left. This motor should, I think, stay. And this other one should spin. And actually, let me let me switch my screen here so you can see the robot now a little bit bigger. There we go. I'm just going to move this guy over here. Okay. Here we go. This is left. This is the pivot turn. And let's see. Hopefully, we have success. I'm just going to make sure my loose cable's up above. And you can see that pivot. Now, I didn't go all the way in a full circle because I only had three rotations, so I could dial that in. And we'll talk about some math here that you can use, which is a great concept and skill to teach your, your students. The next one is a right. All right, I'm going to scoot this over here because this is going to be pretty big. and It may run into my, my walls here, what I'm recording on. But let's go ahead and try it. That's the right button. But you can see there, I almost did like a half turn. I did 20 and 80, so it's a little bit tighter than... than Expect it, but that's fine. And then the last one is our spin turn. And so that is the down button. So I'm going to hit down, and this thing should just spin right here in place. Perfect. So now the other way to do this, just to show you here again really quick, if I didn't want to have it tethered and I want to go run it somewhere else, remember I will hit this, this down arrow, this download, and we'll hear a sound here. There is a sound. I can now unplug it, and now here, I know it's really hard to see here with this light. There we go. I'm in the file folder menu, if you can see that, okay? 
I'm going to choose my three turn folder because that's the name of my code. Yours might be moves and turns if you didn't rename it. And then I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop down there and choose the three turn program. And you can see that it's going to start blinking. And now we're in good shape. I can run those programs right here on the robot without being connected. Okay, so there you go. That is my three turns. I look forward to seeing what turns you've come up with. Can you come up with something different? Go ahead and in the Slack, you're going to share. You can do a video showing the robot and the code, or if you want to do a screenshot of the code and then a video of your robot, we want to go ahead and see what you came up with. It's important that you share both the code and your robot. We want to see your work. We want to give you congratulations. And more importantly, we want to learn from you. So there you have it. The last little thing I will share on this, because this will be important, you know, again, as we, as we move forward here, and I will rotate this back out. When you are done with your, your code, I can either X out of here, it'll save it and close the project, or I can go right back to the home. And if I go to home, you're going to see that our code now is right here under recent projects. And if you start to get a lot, like I could go here to show all, it's going to start to show quite a few projects. All right, I cleared out a bunch here just a little bit ago. And now I could go through if I wanted to, if you ever need to delete any project, it's this little pencil. I could check that, like I don't need that one. I don't need this one or that one. But I'll keep that and that and then I can go right down here I've got delete and I can delete those out that parts really nice the other thing you can do like if I like this three turns I can click here all right and now I have some options here to get this out here and get it moving so you know I could duplicate it if I wanted to my three turns could move this. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and move this, say to my desktop, I could get that file, and now I could then share that with other people. So if I chose my desktop, I'll just hit open here. There it is, and then if I X out of here, you're going to see that three turns. You can now see that it's right here as a code file that I could then share load up from my Google Drive, email it, whatever it might need to do. So just something for you to think about and kind of learn. Um, just be aware of that. And so that's what I like to do is actually what I'll do is I like to duplicate these files. So I have one that stays here in the software and then one I'll move to the desktop and just keep a backup copy. In this case, I'll do that just so I can load a file up on the website for you to explore if you want that. So. All right, my friends, I look forward to seeing your robots, your builds, what you come up with. It's going to be exciting. And remember, my friends, as always, stay awesome. Peace.